Supyang's ceaseless experimentation with various styles and materials set him apart from other artists of his generation. His practice oscillated effortlessly between the abstract and the figurative, and he worked prolifically across mediums. From the 1960s through to the mid-1970s, Supyang concentrated on expanding his abstract and mixed media repertoire. The effort paid off and he yielded several iconic series impressive for their stylized treatments and motifs. Yet it was clear as well that his interest for the figurative remained. He explored new means of depicting Balinese, Malay and Dayak subjects, and his expressions of the traditional village life were increasingly imbued with a spiritual quality. By the 1970s, the image of elegant female figures characterised by angular and elongated limbs was considered the trademark of his figurative style. In 1977, Supyang visited Bali again and completed a new series of sketches and drawings. As compared to earlier materials produced from his first 1952 Bali trip, these later images appear to be more crisp and elaborate in detail. To a degree, they captured his shifting focus towards a new ornate style of figurative painting. Between 1977 and 1982, a body of highly decorative oil works featuring Malay, Balinese and Dayak figures took centre stage in his artistic production. The subjects are usually females in ethnic costumes characterised by his signature elongated limbs. They look poised and incredibly tranquil, in an idyllic setting styled by hanging branches and intricate foliage. Nineteen seventy nine saw another important development that shaped the final five years of Supyang's career. That year, he visited China as part of an art study tour organised by the Society of Chinese Artists in Singapore. The tour was led by Huang Paofang and Xi Hyang Tuo, and it marked Su Ping's first return to China after many decades. Because not much had been said or written by Su Ping regarding the trip, it is impossible to fully grasp the emotional and creative bearings the experience might have had on him. However, what did occur after the China trip was a momentous shift in his aesthetic direction. In 1979, his earlier abstract and mixed media exploration came to a complete halt and there was a renewed and sustained focus on traditionality in his ink practice. Between 1979 and 1983, he produced a new series of ink works that consciously referenced and improvised on the classical aesthetics of ancient Song dynasty. Many of these ink works continued to reflect Nanyang and Southeast Asian landscapes and cultures. The ink works of this series can broadly be understood in two parts. Firstly, from about 1978 to 1981, Su Ping began a pointed investigation into Song Dynasty paintings, particularly in demonstrating the relationship between nature and man. Nature in particular was a symbol of metaphysical ideas, which Suping emphasized with innovations in textural strokes. The atmosphere in these paintings were otherworldly and almost magical, allowing Suping to place his personal stamp onto the millennial old Chinese landscape tradition. The earliest known series of these paintings were produced in Kedah, with subsequent series produced in Malaya and Guilin, China. The second part of this period starts from 1982, right after Su Ping's exhibitions in Taipei, till his abrupt death in 1983. In this series, Su Ping zooms out from the pictorial image and starts to conceptualize the painting as an object. In an article published in 1980, Su Ping emphasized that artists in the Nanyang had to begin to interact with indigenous forms of art in order to create art that was truly of the region. This included weaving and woodworking. In this series, Su Ping incorporated these material elements into the scrolls. His paintings went beyond the category of a pictorial image and could be seen as a piece of conceptual artwork. 
This Nanyang school's short Hao Su Ping's art was in conversation with Chinese conventions, but ultimately tempered with his own identity as a diasporic artist. As Su Ping passed away unexpectedly from heart failure in 1983, the exact context of his late body of ink works was never properly established. There are evidence and family accounts suggesting that he was preparing for an eventual exhibition in China in the 1980s. Could this body of work be meant for an ambitious homecoming exhibition in China? Though Su Piang was already an extremely mature and successful artist in the late 70s, he remained adventurous and inventive. Take this ink on silk painting of squirrels for example. The format and subject matter are considered relatively traditional. To create this composition, he relied heavily on traditional Chinese painting techniques. However, the three branches and leaves were composed in a rather idiosyncratic style and was clearly not devised from any evocated techniques found in the Jie Zi Yuan or manual of the Mustard Seed Garden. They are a mark of Su Piang's own individual style. Malay Figures from 1981 is another work that shows Su Piang's elegant execution of the Chinese Bai Miao technique. The composition depicts a Nanyang subject matter but is essentially and traditionally Chinese in spirit. Paintings of the Northern Song Dynasty often exhort the transcendental harmony between man and nature. This ink composition is a significant example of Su Piang's rendition of this theme. The theme of spiritual harmony and transcendental coexistence between man and nature is very much present in Su Piang's late oil work as well, as can be seen in By the River 2. This composition of two Malay ladies against a backdrop of mountains, rocks and trees reflects obvious influences from traditional Chinese painting. In fact, if we were to modify the configuration to include two classical literati male figures, the composition would turn into a standard Chinese painting of the Southern Song Academic School. Though the painting was executed in oil on canvas, Su Piang painted the rocks and trees using the Chinese technique of Chun Fa, emphasizing texture through exquisite brushwork. In 1983, Su Piang passed away unexpectedly from a heart attack, cutting short what was already a glorious artistic legacy which has to this day remained hard to surpass.